in more detail today about our plans for the development of the industrial and in particular the energy sector during my Eurasia Group meeting with representatives of the United States business community. For this audience here today, however, let me cover certain aspects of health care reform and education reform in greater detail. I shall begin with medicine. This subject is particularly dear to me. My professional career has been in the medical field. Moreover, I engaged in both scientific research and medical practice. During my government work over the past several years, I was responsible for the development of medicine. I hold a real, rather than honorary, PhD degree in medicine, and therefore I am familiar with the entire scope of issues related to our health system and our achievements in this field, and I'm aware of the depth of our unresolved problems, perhaps better than anyone else today in Turkmenistan. First of all, we are dealing with health care management issues as the most important part of our social problems. Indeed, it is hard to imagine a well-functioning health care system which does not have legislation on such crucial social issues as maternity and childhood, disability benefits, or benefits for war veterans, retirees, etc. Consequently, both our policy and approaches to the development of medicine are closely interlinked with our overall social policy built on the fundamental principle of care for the ordinary person. To continue on the subject of medicine, I think it would be useful to mention issues of training and retraining of medical personnel, both of those practicing medicine and of medical researchers. In the field of medicine, the issue of personnel training is closely linked to the issue of technological progress. It is along these two lines that we most need international cooperation. And in this respect, your country can offer us unique opportunities. Your excellent medical centers, therefore, are in fact precisely the right place for our personnel to be retrained, obtain information, and learn to work with the latest medical technologies. This applies in full to your remarkable medical center at Columbia University. We are currently engaged in active work within the United States with the United States government on training of personnel, and we would be happy if Columbia University displayed interest in such cooperation. Now, I would like to speak about education. I know how much importance is attached to the development of education and science here, and how impressive your achievements are in this field. We, too, are very conscious of the strategic role that education and science are playing in our country. It is therefore no coincidence that the development of education takes precedence over any other aspect of my policy. Education, as Dr. Anderson, is not just an important sector of the national economy. There are a total of 1.6 million people who are involved in this educational process. These are our children, our young people, and our teachers. This represents a complex interface of different generations and destinies. For me personally, it is also a deep-rooted family tradition. My father, after World War II, worked as an ordinary school teacher in a rural area. I will tell you frankly that today the atmosphere in today's Turkmenistan is absolutely extraordinary. Our children are experiencing such a strong and intense yearning for knowledge that we simply cannot fail and we cannot let them down. We must do our best to ensure that education in Turkmenistan meets modern standards. The scope of work requiring the government's attention today is enormous. It includes both preschools and schools in the development of education and science. The, all of these problems are closely interlinked, and yet at the same time they interface with other sectors of the economy that are making increasingly higher demands on the professional workforce to ensure their normal function. Perhaps some of you here may be wondering why the president 
is giving such a detailed account of the state of education in his country. The answer, however, is simple. The picture I have given you will inevitably lead you to a definitive conclusion. It takes more than solely the domestic efforts of a nation to achieve state-of-the-art level in education and science. Knowledge and science inherently exceed the national plane and attain a largely supranational aspect. For this reason, one of the most important elements of our international educational policies is to establish international collaboration with the world's leading scientific and educational centers. Here, I think it would be appropriate to express our sincere gratitude to the U.S. government for the effective assistance it has provided to us as part of various educational programs during the years of our independence. Hundreds of our school children, students, and experts have visited your country. I take special pride in saying that over the short period of my presidency, the scope of this cooperation has reached a new level of quality. This is the result of our joint efforts working with the United States government. However, this is just the beginning. We have a lot to do. A road lies ahead of us, so I'd like to present to you our vision of the ways our cooperation in education and science could develop further. First of all, we would like to continue training our young people under the major educational programs offered by the U.S. government. And second, we are prepared to send to the United States for training on a regular basis the best Turkmen students to be funded by our government and from our non-governmental funds. And we would like to select a group of U.S. universities and establish long-term cooperation with them in areas of mutual interest. We already have experience in the development of such programs. For example, from 1998 to 2002, our Turkmen University successfully collaborated with the well-known Texas A&M University. As a result, a new business and management department was created in the Turkmen University, and many students and faculty were trained in Texas. Due to the development of new educational technologies, today online education has become particularly widespread. And a good example of the success of such programs is that of the University of Phoenix in Arizona. We have been carefully following such innovations. Even though online education does have certain well-known disadvantages, nevertheless, it does offer to a much broader student audience in foreign colleges and universities universities coupled with low, to the lower tuition costs, possibility for education. And finally, not even speaking in the long term, but in the very short term, we could consider a Turkmen U.S. university project in Turkmenistan or open branches of those U.S. universities that would be interested in so doing. We could also work together on projects for continuing annual scientific and training conferences to be attended by the research centers involved and by relevant international companies. This kind of experience of a conference is something we already have. Ashgabat has been hosting annual Turkmen International Oil and Gas Tube conferences dedicated to the development of its national energy complex. We believe such ideas can become more realistic if we step up successful